Welcome to Operation Fishing Freedom. I'm Jay Garstecki. Today we're going to be fishing with a very special lady, Opal Waldman, a 94-year-old World War II Army veteran. Military veterans protect our great nation. Pro anglers Jay Garstecki and Ben Olson made it their duty to honor our heroes. They want to share soldiers' stories. The perfect place to carry out this mission? A fishing boat. Get ready to launch Operation Fishing Freedom. Brought to you by Great Clips. It's a blustery day for fishing on Bangs Lake in Illinois. Hang on tight. Your granddaughter's in charge of you right now. <laughs> Luckily, we have our own ray of sunshine along for the ride. Take a vet fishing. Look at that. I think that's a good idea. You think it's a good idea? Take a vet fishing? I think that's wonderful. Yeah. A day of giving back? Yeah. yeah. You're always giving, aren't you? Giving back, it's something Opal Waldman knows a lot about. Look at you. I'm living this long just to give people uh, an idea how to live. There you go. <laughs> and you're going to pretty soon give them an idea how to go fishing and how to catch some fish, right? Oh, if you say so. <laughs> oh, we say so. <laughs> you see, this 94-year-old is a World War II Army veteran and getting ready for a day of fishing. Opal's story begins in Grays Lake, Illinois. She was the youngest of three children. When Opal was only four years old, she and her mother caught pneumonia. Opal survived. Her mother did not. My grandma and grandpa raised us. They had a farm in Round Lake. My dad moved us all in with grandma and grandpa. Dad married again, I was seven, and my stepmother was very good to me. Opal's father served in the Army in World War I. My father didn't talk much about his Army career. He might have done so with my brothers, but not with me. Opal graduated in 1941, the year World War II hit close to home. One of the saddest things was one of our neighbor boys was the first one to be killed in Grays Lake during, during the bombing of Pearl Harbor. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. I saw all the boys going in and I said, well, why can't I do that? Opal, along with her two older brothers, enlisted. And they both enlisted before World War I because they didn't want to be drafted into anything. They wanted to do their own thing. So my oldest brother, Don, went in the Navy, but my brother, Bud, he went into the Marine Corps. All three siblings in World War II. Opal and some 350,000 women served in the U.S. Armed Forces during the war. That was in addition to the women who answered the call on the home front. It was to free a man to fight. They were asking for volunteers and I volunteered. Well, I had a student pilot's license and I had 35 hours of flying time. And that's why I was accepted to the WASP program. So I thought, well, if I go and I survive, maybe someone else will come. The campaign, known as Rosie the Riveter, was rolled out, stressing the patriotic need for women to enter the workforce and the war. At the urging of First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, Congress instituted the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps, later upgraded to the Women's Army Corps, known as WACS. Other branches followed. The WASP were created because they needed more pilots because the fellows who could fly were sent to combat. And they needed the women to do the training and the fairing in our country at that time. Every place you went, they were 
advertising women to volunteer to free a man to go fight. So I said, well, let me try the Coast Guard. And the Coast Guard recruiter was just so welcoming. She wanted to be the first one to enroll uh, African-American. First step, being shipped off to boot camp. They taught us how to mark, how to drill. Once we graduated from basic training, they put us on this troop train and one carload of women, and the rest were all men. They actually guarded our car so the guys wouldn't come over and bother us. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, Recon Boats, and by Evinrood Outboards. Is that the biggest fish you ever caught? <laughs> not, you know, not the biggest fish. Just the biggest fish today, right? Yeah, today. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Let's get it over yeah. here. <laughs> you know what kind of fish that is? Yeah, it's a little bass. That's a sunfish. Oh, that's a sunfish, that's yeah. That's a sunfish. Right. Yeah, that's right. They call it fishing for a reason. Oh, they took all of our bait. <laughs> But neither Mother Nature nor a slow bite can dampen this World War II veteran's spirit. Oh, he got off. <laughs> he, he got, got off. Bite. He got a bite, too. Yeah, he got a bite. He got a bite to eat. I'm feeding these fish instead of catching them. <laughs> You're supposed to catch them. I know. I'm going to go try again. Try try another place or something. All right, let's see. How big were the fish that you used to catch in Waukegan? Oh, it was... Big ones, huh? Oh, sure. You see, Opal is used to toughing it out. Women in the war. U.S. Navy nurses line up for inspection in their new summer uniforms. Every day, new legions are being called to active duty afloat and ashore. Back in 1942, she and hundreds of other women enlisted and were shipped to basic training boot camp. It was a big change for small town girls. The first place the, where I took my basic training was Oglethorpe, Georgia. That's where they big had, had big women's training camp. And it was a six weeks camp. Well, they had to get the primary, the basic, and the advanced flying, and that's where we did at Sweetwater, Texas. I flew a plane before I drove a car. Everything was new to me. They get you up at five o'clock in the morning and you do exercises for an hour before you went to breakfast. Of course, you had to polish your floor, even though it didn't need polishing. <laughs> and, uh, One day they, chose, they said, okay, Alan, get out there and drill us. Give us a march, they said. We had the same training that the men had at that time, and it was just wonderful. I just loved all that training we had. And when the training completed, it was time for service. They put me on a troop train, and I went all the way from there to Walla Walla, Washington. Opal moved every six months, stationed at three different locations always in charge of medical supplies. They would uh, have us uh, one weekend every month go in and be the nurse for those particular tr troops that had come in. I didn't do x-rays or anything like that. It was strictly giving them medicine and m maybe rewrapping their wounds, things like that. When I was a civilian and worked, I always worked in accounting, and I was a, an excellent typist. Opal met her first husband, a sailor serving in the Navy. And then, of course, when I got married, I was out 
for you. After a year and a half of service, Opal had to leave the Army when she got married. Rules were rules. She tried sending a telegram to tell her family the news, but received an unexpected telegram from home before she could. It said, my father passed away. And I'm thinking, Grandpa? Well, I could see where Grandpa could go. But I read it again. And I never did get home from my dad's funeral. Back home, Opal got a job at the local naval station. Still, she always found a reason to dance. By this time, I had divorced my first husband. I met Paul, the, my children's father, at one of those dances. And there was a good reason to dance. In 1945, the war ended. Opal and Paul had 18 happy years together before she lost Paul to a stroke. Opal also lost her son. He was only 46. Though Opal has had her share of sad news in a lifetime, <laughs> you'd never guess it. All right, we're gonna cast it out. Where should I cast it out to? Over there, over here, over there. Where are all the fish at? Right, over there. Over there? All right, let's take a look. How's that? Good casting. Good cast? Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, SKB Cases, and by St. Croix Rods. I think you got one. Looks like there was one on there. Oh, you got one. Oh, oh yeah, I did. That's even smaller. <laughs> They're supposed to be getting bigger, not smaller. <laughs> Hi, little guy, poor little thing. <laughs> if you're a U.S. military veteran living in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, or Florida, log on to takeavetfishing.org to find an event near you. <laughs> Is that the biggest fish you ever caught? <laughs> not, no, not the biggest. <laughs> Just the biggest fish today, right? Yeah, today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The fishing may be slow, but if there's a phrase that describes Opal Waldman, it's no matter what happens in life, you just keep on dancing. We take the kids fishing as much as we could. We never got any trout. That we call them sea bass, and they were good eating. Advice she now passes along to family. Growing up listening to my grandfather on my paternal side and then Opal, my mom's mother, talking to each other about how they both served where they were during World War II was also, you know, it's gonna be forever in my heart. But we're very blessed to have her still. Very blessed. And still, new stories every day. <laughs> yes, every day there's a new story, so. After her service in World War II, Opal continued her story, meeting her third husband, who had also served in the Navy. This is the engagement ring for Opal's third marriage. You're quite the dancer. <laughs> yeah, we did. He, he and I did a lot of polkas together. Opal always likes to be in the middle of the action. I just like to go where there are people enjoying themselves. It, you know. What is that fish? Did you happen to see the size of that largemouth? I, I saw how. I didn't see quite how large it was, but I it was a it was big, a big bass that swam right by here. And after 30 years of work at the local naval station, and now retired, Opal continues to be a survivor. Where did he go? He was the big one. He's outlived three husbands. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've outlived. <laughs> but she never stopped giving back. My daughter was still was still up here, living up here, and she said, Mom, you really ought to go and see that place there. It's opening. It's a senior center. Opal now volunteers at the center. Are you willing to take us on a tour? I'm willing. Anytime you, I can show you top and bottom. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> hey, Opal, they're cheating. There they are. Where's your ace? Oh, this 
this is our Veterans Hall. We have all the generals that are, that are our U.S. generals. This is our, our Veterans Honor Roll. And you, I have to show you where, where I am right now, the very first one. Right here, there. Yeah, Sergeant that's Opal Waldman, and I'm U.S. Army, 1945-1946. Uh -huh. And are you the first, first female? First woman. First woman veteran to be on that honor wall roll. Yes, it's, I'm very honored. You should be honored. If you'd like to thank one of the veterans featured on our show, go to OperationFishingFreedom.com and we'll make sure they get your message. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Optima Batteries, Temple Bay Lodge, and by PowerPole. a big one. That Yay. one's a better one. <laughs> Thanks for taking me fishing, guys. <laughs> World War II Army God, veteran God. Opal Waldman leaves a legacy. Uh, hey, I found a fish <laughs> in the water. <laughs> Not only a legacy of service to country, but to family as well. Whenever Streamwood has their dedication services if I can get there I'm gonna, I'm gonna be there well and she's a woman and especially in her time that's not something that was very common and to this day she can still say how proud she was to serve her country and we're very proud of her as well so just it's just amazing yeah it, gave me something to talk about, so to speak, you know. <laughs> and, and I talk about it a lot. <laughs> a proud family, two children, five grandchildren, three great-grandchildren, and two, get this, great-great-grandchildren. This Operation Fishing Freedom is really good, you know, just to appreciate everybody that's served our country and just we can't say thanks enough, but we can say thanks as much as we can. Hey, Opal. What? I wanted to tell you that I, I have a little gift for you. Oh, you do? Yeah, this is your very own red, white, and blue fishing uh, rod. Oh, bless your soul. And this has handcrafted for Opal Waldman. Oh. And it's got all the branches of service on there for you. And that's your very own rod. Oh, thank Say thank you for your service to our country. Thank you so much. Women serving in World War II paved the way for future military women. And now, over 210,000 ladies actively serve in the five military branches. What fishermen would be official without their very own fishing jersey? So we got a, we've got a fishing jersey here with your name on it. There's Opal and Waldman on the back end here. Let me hold that that way. Oh, bless you. So now you got your very own red, white, and blue jersey you can wear on the 4th of July. I'm going to do that. And it's got your name on there, and you wear that over to the senior center, and you tell everybody you're a celebrity. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, I've never had a fishing rod like that. Well, good. Yeah. Now you do. No. Oh, so now you're going to get to go fishing and catch the big fish with this one. Does that sound good? <laughs> hey, no crying. Thank you for your service. Oh. Thank you for everything you did for our country. We I, appreciate it. I, I don't deserve it. You I, don't deserve it? Are you kidding me? Of course I, you do. I, I just can't get it. 
<laughs> Thank the Lord for these men. Praise them. They do such a wonderful job for us that God bless them. Thank you. Thank you for your Care service. For them with all your heart. Now let's get you back where it's warm. Okay. I all right. Is that a deal? Yeah, it's a deal. Okay. Uh, so did you have fun fishing? Oh, I had such a nice day. Good. I think it's one of the best days I've had in my whole life. And <laughs> thanks to you, young men. You're well, wonderful to doing it for us. Thank you for your service, Opal. And please do it for us. Always keep dancing. If you enjoyed today's show and you'd like to nominate a vet for a future episode, please log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com, and click on the Nominate a Vet button.